here they come. They'll never take me away. I won't go to room 16. You will. You're already there. psychedelic rock uh, contest and um, this is going to be a complete 360 or is it a 180? Hell, I, I was never good at geometry so whatever but this is going to be a new wave power pop edition of far out finds huh? Hey look at there a little adjustment all right hey what we're listening to here this is friggin' fantastic. This is Punishment of Luxury. Um, God, this is a great record. Um, this was probably my top album of not this last year, but the year before. I actually showed this on a video quite some time ago. Check out that inner sleeve. This is great new wave alt rock from like the late 70s. Check out those Brainiacs there. I highly recommend this record. This is freaking fantastic. All right, so uh, a little new wave action, huh? Um, I haven't done a new wave video in quite some time. I have gathered some new wave records um, in the recent past here. And I've just been waiting for an opportunity to show them and that opportunity came uh, and this video is inspired by a movie that I recently watched. Uh, which I will talk about later in the video. So uh, let's get it on, right? You guys ready? Vinyl community, are you ready to freaking see some new wave and power pop? Right on, let's do this. Oh, this. Oh, you're talking about this. Hey, check it out. Check out my new mood ring. It's like all th like three different colors there. I'm emotionally unstable right now. Oh God, somebody help me. Uh, whatever. But um, yeah, let's do Big Chuck. Get it out of the way, get to the vinyl, right? Cause you're here for the vinyl. You're not here for the brew. All right, let's do it. Hoist it up, big guys, big gals. I love big gals. Oh, Woo! Big all right, here we go. Oh yes, yes, my good friend, of course. <laughs> Oh, so tasty. I'm going to start this off. I, I've got this six pack of cassettes some time ago at the Mighty Planet Score, uh, the St. Louis area premier record shop. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Joe and Tim down there at Planet Score who are just fantastic guys with a fantastic store. But I picked up this six pack of the Boingo. Check that shit out. You've got uh, Nothing to Fear cassette here. Great Oingo Boingo album. Uh, Only a Lad. Ah, this is fantastic. Uh, new Wave, 80s alt rock. Boingo Alive, 
killer live stuff. And this one's called Boy Ngo. <laughs> and uh, Dark Side of the Tunnel. A little later stuff for them. And then the best of the Boingo here, yeah. Cool shit, man. Um, I rock a few cassettes now and then, so. Um, but my favorite cassette I've been rocking for a while here is the old, uh, the old, uh, Disconnects cassette, uh, featuring one Ryan Kidd. There he is with that big mop head of hair right there. I love it. Been rocking that. Uh, I've had it for a while, just, uh, busted it back out recently, been kicking it around. Killer stuff. Couldn't get the vinyl, had to go with the cassette, so. All right, let's get into some new wave, uh, vinyl. You guys ready for that action? Let's do it. Speaking of Ryan Kidd, the doctor and the Kidd live stream I took part in the other night, and I showed this album. Uh, the Brains, this is a self-titled record, um, and all of a sudden I looked up and e about everybody in the panel was holding up the record, so e just about, this is pretty available, I guess, everybody has it, check out, I just, first thing that got me was this cover, it's just like so hot, hi-fi, it's so sci-fi, I just love that cover, um, cool, just new wave power pop, and you know, of course, they definitely look like the definitive new wave pop and look at this guy he's got the old front butt rocking right there the old uh moose claw <laughs> oh shit poor guy i shouldn't i shouldn't poke fun i mean you know it was it was, it was a thing to wear tight red pants back then but this is great um this was released in 1980 on, on mercury records this is a band out of the big ATL, led by uh, songwriter and vocalist Tom Gray. Uh, it's also produced by the great Steve Lillywhite, who's produced such uh, new wave greats as like Simple Minds, Talking Heads, uh, Psychedelic Furs, Susie and the Banshees, uh, some really killer uh, bands of the genre. He's also done some uh, biggies out of, outside the genre as well. But this is like new wave power pop with this, the just cool lead vocals. Uh, Tom Gray's vocals are just that that perfect new wave stylings to it. Um, and the background vocals on this are amazing. Uh, it's just full of hooks and cool lyrical content. Um, you know, new wave and power pop bands always have a song about a girl like with a girl's name in the title right and this one's no exception with the song Raylene that's a, a top track for me another outstanding track is the opening track called treason it's just this really friggin groove heavy uh, synthy jam it's an instrumental it's co-mingled with some really killer guitar soloing um, great riffs and kind of a spaghetti western bass line. It's fantastic way to open a great new wave record. Um, other notable tracks on this are uh, the atmospheric in the night and then it's got uh, the first appearance of the song <coughs> Money Changes Everything that was like three years later made popular and was a big hit for Cindy Lauper head off. Um, so yeah, check this, check this album. It's well worth it, man. All right, let's get on to the second one. Now this is one I've seen around a lot. I bought it quite a while ago. It's a cheapo. It's this, it's called the Hitman and it's called Torn Together. Kind of a cool cover there too. Uh, this one was released in 81 on Columbia Records. It's uh, like synth rock. Um, they're English New Wavers, uh, it's punchy New Wave, alt pop, uh, just cool wavy pop songs with hooks galore, uh, killer bass lines, and some danceable jams on it. Um, it's so wild, these, these New Wave bands from the 80s and some of that like new romantic stuff, the bass playing and the bass uh, lines in those songs 
are just so like almost technical and they're very good. Um, if you listen close to the, um, even like Duran Duran, the bass playing in that, in the fix, the band the fix are fantastic. And this is no exception here. Uh, check out the guys in the band there. Uh, uh, definitely with the the blazers there and the friggin' skinny ties. Uh, definitely um, uh, some new wave look there. Now the opening track on this is called Bates Motel, and it's probably the standout track on the album. Um, kind of a wild song. Um, not so much about like the the sci this movie Psycho, but more about a stalker serial killer type deal um in fact there's a lyric that goes lying in wait with my super eight it's a song about a guy like you know maybe abducting uh i su assume women and then use it, filming his exploits with his super eight camera um and basically turning his house into bates motel which is kind of a these new waivers can get freaking dark, man. They're who knew? I mean, I always blame like the metal community for being dark, but these new waivers are brutal, brutal, I say. But um, yeah, this is cool. Um, kind of a you know, no commercial success with this, no promotion by the record company. Uh, that's why I think we can get them for so cheap here. So. Uh, other standout, sound, ugh, standout tracks would be uh, Changing Faces and then the hauntingly beautiful Comfort Me, which is the closing track on this album. Check out the Hitman. You can get it cheap, uh, really cheap. So, And kind of along the same lines is another one I picked up. Cover probably drew me in. Oh, look at that. Back cover, front cover. Wait, I don't know which is which. But this is the original Mirrors. Now this was released in 1980 on Arista Records, a uh, British new wave band out of Liverpool. They're Liverpudlians. Sorry, anybody from Liverpool, I just brutalized that. But yeah, members of this band, uh, one was in Big in Japan, which is Ian Brody, and also um, Steve Allen from Deaf School, another kind of alt rock, art rock, uh, new wave band um, that I picked up a couple years back. This is a good record too here. It's some kind of promotional album there. But yeah, Steve Allen uh, and um, Ian Brody were basically the driving force behind this vehicle here, the main songwriters. Uh, very upbeat, poppy synth stuff uh, with the new wave. Uh, touch to it. Strong vocals, fast paced delivery, uh, just some fun songs on this. Uh, it's a good little album, again, with little or no promotion from the record company. Um, no commercial ex success either. Another cheapo you can get. Uh, kind of a Sparks influence here, maybe a little bit of Roxy as well. Um, some standout tracks on this would be. Um, could This Be Heaven? Uh, and then they do a cover of the Supremes uh, Reflections, which is really quite good. Kind of a new wave version of that. And then the song Flying is good on this too. But check, you can check, like I said, you might as well pick it up, it's cheap. And now this one is fantastic. I showed this one recently on, um, on a, my Devo Artist Featured album or, uh, video. This is called The Spizzles. This is Spiky Dream Flowers. Uh, this was released on, in 1981 on A&M Records. Uh, very strange post-punk new wave album with definite sci-fi uh, theme here and a little power pop action as well. This is led by Spiz or Spiz Energy or Spiz Oil or Atletico Spiz, uh, whatever name he goes by. In fact, when I picked this up at the record store, you know the uh, mar the bin markers where they sometimes have the band's name on it and then the records were behind the, the marker? This one had all uh, Spiz's band's names on that marker. There must have been five different names. 
But there's the band there. I believe this is Spiz right here. Um, great stuff, man. This is, um, this like I said, I showed it on my Devo vid. I think because they um, toured with Devo, had a Devo connection. But there's songs about Star Trek on here, uh, songs about robots, and then there's this song about the board game Risk. Uh, that, uh, and by the end of the song, it becomes an actual bloodbath between the the players. So yeah, uh, probably most famous for their indie uh, song, their indie hit called "Where's Captain Kirk," which is not on this album. But it's, it's kind of metallic and cold, but fun. And Spiz delivers the lyrics which, with such conviction for such a, you know, quirky uh, lyrical content. But it's got a kind of a pumpy, uh, pumpy. It's got kind of a pumpy. No, I'm just kidding. Got kind of a punky uh, feel to it uh, with Spiz's vocals. Um, standout tracks on this would be Five Year Mission, which is the song about Star Trek. Uh, it's got um, Dangers of Living, Soldier, Soldier. Uh, what's the other one? Central Park. This is a good album, man. Pick this up again. Another one you can probably get for 10 or less. Um, this one is absolutely one of my favorite uh, bands of all time. Um, this is... Uh, one of my favorite new wave bands of all time. This is The Vapors, and this is called Magnets. A very cool album here. Uh, this one's released in 1981 on Liberty Records. Uh, it's the second studio album by this new wave outfit. Kind of power pop as well. Uh, led by David Fenton, who's the primary songwriter in this group. Uh, kind of a darker lyrical content and darker... Uh, song uh, themes than say their um, than their debut record Nuclear Days, which is a fantastic record. Look at there's the guys there. That's David Fenton right there, which I'm pointing to. Check out his uh, new wave mullet there. The guys, you know, these guys always had their new wave mullet, uh, a, a wallet, a new wallet. Don't laugh about that because it's not funny. But yeah, this is, like I said, second studio album. The songs on this, like I said, are of a darker content. There's a song on here called Jimmy Jones, which is about Jim Jones from the uh, People's Temple cult, you know, the mass suicide in Guyana where like 900 people drank the Kool-Aid and, and over and out, right? God, what a sad story. And then the um, another song called Isolated... Uh, Isolated Case, yeah, Isolated Case is about state oppression, and then there's a song about, uh, called Civil Hall, which is about him, David Fenton, an experience he had being manhandled by a Metro Police. Uh, a couple songs about depression in here, Spiders, which is my standout track on the album, and Can't uh, Talk Anymore. This is great, and um, the title track, Magnets, is about the assassination of Robert and um, John F. Kennedy. In fact, if you look at this cover art, this is the same artist that did Where's Waldo, and this is actually, I know it looks like an eye, but it's actually um, an assassination attempt. There's a guy, a sniper up here on top of the building, and then there's a car down here. So yeah, it's kind of a, even though it looks like a quirky new wave cover, uh, this is actually quite dark, but um, really great album. I, t I highly recommend this. Let me flip this over real quick. Uh, the next album is um, probably one of the best ones that I'm gonna show you here today. Big surprise for me. Um, this is uh, Dirk Wears White Socks by Adam and the Ants. I friggin' love this record, man. Um, this is uh, Adam and the Ants' debut album right here, released in 79. Now, this is a 1983 reissue. Um, this is, like I said, their debut album, the only one that features uh, the original lineup. Uh, of Adam and the Ants as they uh, broke up basically right after this record. And here's why. 
After the Sex Pistols, Malcolm McLaren managed Adam and the Ants for a couple minutes. And, um, of course, he was trying to, you know, control them and uh, probably lead them to ruin as he did the Sex Pistols. But he found a formidable opponent in one Adam Ant and um, who p gave him some pushback and like he, had, you know, Adam had his own vision. Um, but uh, so Malcolm McLaren basically stole the ants from Adam and formed Bow Wow Wow. Um, but um, Adam, of course, went on with his own vision, got his own band. And Marco Peroni, uh, the guitar player, uh, stayed with Adam and um, they became longtime songwriting partners on most of the great commercial successful albums of uh, Adam, Ant, Adam and the Ants' career. But I think for some reason that cover art, he looks a little bit to me like um, Jared Leto from 30 Seconds to Mars and, um, you know, and, he, and the Joker from Suicide Squad and he was in Blade Runner. I think you know what I'm talking about. For some reason, he reminds me of him right there. Look how young he looks right there. But this is great. It's artistic and gothy at times. Very much a lot of raw energy here. Uh, probably the most punk album of Adam and the Ants uh, repertoire. But the standout tracks here are Car Trouble, um, Xerox. I, my favorite song on this is Nine Plan Fail. That's a fantastic tune. A song called Cleopatra is great too. I highly recommend this album. Check it out. Now I did mention at the top of the uh, video that um, I was inspired to do this after watching a movie uh, a, that featured a uh, like post-punk new wave band, um, and that movie was called Breaking Glass, and it, and the movie featured uh, one Hazel O'Connor, right? And it's about this. Um, it came out in like eighty, I believe, nineteen eighty. This and the soundtrack was released on A and M Records. It's a about a post-punk band. Um, mostly about Kate, the singer, who wanted to get her music out there, um, and then she um, meets d this young entrepreneur named Danny, who wanted to, you know, be a band manager and produce a band, and you know, take them to the top, right? And then they do a bunch of auditions. They put a band together, and it kind of shows them struggling to get gigs, and then it. And a record contract and once they do sign with a major label it shows how you can get chewed up and spit out as a band and sell out um, and that's kind of the, the synopsis of the movie but look at that that's fantastic this is a really cool movie it's a good indie flick if you haven't seen it, I'm sure you can find it online somewhere but yeah the songs on this kind of remind they have a, a big saxophone sound with it. It's kind of post-punk new wave with a sax. Uh, kind of reminds me of um, like uh, the X-ray specs with polystyrene. Uh, also maybe a little Susie and the Banshees. Um, throw in a touch of Romeo Void and uh, you've got like the soundtrack of Breaking Glass. So yeah, check this shit out. This is great, man. All right, um, that's my new wave video. Hope you guys dug it, man. Um, I'm gonna give you another toast for the road, and we'll get you guys phased back to your to your normal lives, and I'll go back to uh, getting loaded. And no, I'm just kidding, <laughs> kidding, kidding. All right, you guys. Cheers. I love you guys. Stay safe. Stay cool. Stay cosmic. See you next video. All right. Peace. It's cosmic vibe.